contributions part 12 and 13. I will be sharing two slides uh, separately. So last week we have a very long introduction, not introduction, like a summary, like a recap of what, why we're we learning this, uh, you know, how important it is to be um, knowing, you know, the point of all this, you know, um, learning is to use it to remind ourselves to, you know, like as I say, as I share it to everyone, I'm actually reminding myself. That's the main point. Um, and you know, uh, as a you know, as a fellow, you know, person who aspire to be enlightened and get out of these six dreams, you know, this um, endless cycle of sufferings, um, we need to uh, really put ourselves in this. Um, it's a trajectory, you know, where we are getting something out of the, you know, limited time we have. You know, time is very short. So today we're gonna, without further ado, we're going to, into the last uh, sentence of part twelve. Um, part twelve talks about disempowering others, and we learn about, uh, you know being unfair, rig the system, causing other people who are supposedly, you know, promoted or getting um, their due reward, not getting it, you know, um, robbing people of their opportunity, robbing people of their rewards that they deserve after the hard work. These are empowering, uh, disempowering people, uh, disencouraging people uh, to contribute. So that's very bad. And, you know, unfair rewards and punishments and excessive indulgence um, in uh, you know one's pursuit you know, of pleasure you know or you know luxury uncontrolled spending is also disempowering in the terms of um, un unable to sort out the priorities of life so um, the last one is what we're going to talk about today, treat servants and subordinates with abuse and disdain. So these are very commonly found in uh, when someone has a little bit of power, has a bit of influence, you know, and it's very easy to, you know, get, put, let your gut down, you know, and let your uh, bad habits kick in, you know, somehow, you know, um, people think it's all right to do this towards another. You know, we might think like, you know, since I'm already you know, work hard to reach this position, I can just, you know, have the license to be uh, arrogant, have the license to be, you know, to be um, a bully. Um, of course, you know, we understand that no one wants to be in that position to be bullied or to be, to be in, a, in constant fear, right? To be on constant fear. Of and uh, of others of the situation they're in, you know, unease. So this ability of um, this lack of empathy that caused to this action is very um, uh, unfortunate. It's very bad. So you know, no matter how high we achieve in our in our life, we must always treat everyone with respect, with you know, basic respect, basic decency. Uh, no matter how people revert you, or how people, you know, promote, um, you know, give you all this, um, you know, respect and uh, promotion and stuff like that, we can never forget, you know, the grounds we're walking on, so to speak. Don't forget where we come from, and that will keep us humble. You know how we started and how it all began. Just because you have all the luxuries and all the, you know, um, success right now, does not mean that you know it will be there forever. That's also another way to remind ourselves. We might fall into the same position as the other person right now is. So, you know, have, have a bit of a exercise on empathy, you know, exercise on putting your feet into other people's shoes. So this is why understanding and, and actually uh, internalizing this kind of um, mindset is important. No matter how you, and you, you will be able to go far if we are, um, Maintaining, you know, keeping it real, keeping it humble, keeping it, um, keeping it grounded. Uh, so how do we be successful for real? How do we be, you know, 
really uh, able to you know carry ourselves correctly. You know, this is a bad example. So how do we carry ourselves properly? Everyone has um, aspiration. You know, they're trying to achieve um, a certain goal, a certain mission. Right? It can be as you know worldly as you know just getting more money, or it can be as um, big as becoming an enlightened being, saving all beings. But this cannot leave one factor that is to overcome our own hurdles ourselves. You know, not to sound cheesy, but that is how it works. You have to overcome the hurdle that you have placed ahead of yourself. You know, if we understand cause of cause and effect, we understand. You know, everything we face now, everything we could, everything we encounter right now. You know, all the things that we use, the things that we people we met, the situation we're in, is the result of our past um, endeavors, our past habits, thoughts, actions, and this accumulate, accumulative, I mean, cumulative effort, you know. Uh, hi, Melinda. So this uh, effort, you know, accumulated into next life. Hi, Dylan. Hello, hi. welcome, Thank welcome. You. How are you? Good, and you? Good, good, good. Welcome to our session, you know. Uh, Thank you. We're just going to keep it a bit short this time because last time we are uh, overstretched one and a half an hour extra, so pull it back a bit. All right. So we were just talking about finishing this part 12. I think we already touched this part uh, last week. So I'll keep it short and so that we can move on to a new clause, but I don't want to rush it. Um, as we understand, this are is empowering others and treating servants and subordinates with abuse and disdain is absolutely a bully. And um, just because by the virtues of our you know influence and our position, it does not warrant, it does not give us a okay to do that. You know, just because laws or police or you know it's not illegal, it's not um, you know people cannot touch you. Or maybe your 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 mouth is very sharp, you know. You're very witty, as you can see. A lot of you know, people in talk shows and all that they are very smart and witty. Sometimes they are way way too smart for their own good. Sometimes, um, because you know everyone has their own uh, you know self worth and dignity. And if we understand, uh, you know generally you know how important it is to have a, a, a well-grounded mindset so that our success remember success is made not just by yourself but by the help of many people you can't have a sangha without a good student uh, to, 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 to to follow your teaching and exemplify your teaching like Buddha can't have a sangha that we know nowadays if uh, you know there's no student to work with him right otherwise he would just go into nirvana by himself no one would know about buddhism same goes for worldly stuff everything you know the performance you know the, the, the one of the great cinemas you see how many people behind the scene work towards it you know, the crew work over time the you know the visually fair artists the um directors the you know the the actors and all that just because you you might get more spotlight more prestige over other people it does not make you okay, you know, to to be a diva, so to speak, to be a you know an arrogant person. Um, it's important to have a certain level of self, sense of self, in order to carry your job. You know, you can't be just sit, sitting there and worry about this, worry about that when you're supposed to perform, of course. But that's because you want to perform a task. Once you're back to normal. As not as yourself in the sense of you know normal sit settings, there is no need to continue this kind of um, act, you know this you know big egoistic act. And just on day to day situation as well, right? Um, um, so we need to you need to understand what abuse and disdain means, right? It can be direct, it can be indirect. You know, directly it can be like just straight out yelling, swearing, humiliating in front of everyone else over mistakes, small mistakes, stuff like that. Or 
you know, like make a sneer remarks, something, you know, very um, cleverly covered, but uh, intention is always, you know, making fun at the expense of someone, make someone the butt of the joke all the time, you know, once in a while it won't hurt, increase your relationship with others, but if you do it all the time, it becomes target practice, which is very sad. Um, this also can be extend towards service industry, towards the waiter, towards the people who service you, right? They might not be your subordinates or servants, but at that moment, you know, they are giving you a service or putting food or anything, you know, and just because you pay the money does not mean it's all right for you to be a Karen or be some, uh, be an irreasonable person, you know, um, like if there's something wrong, do it rationally, like an adult, don't use emotion, hunt over, you know, basic decency as a human being, right? At the end of the day, everyone's playing a role, right? You work hard from your own job to get services product. And if this product is not correct, it's not right, it's not properly done, do it properly, you know, raise your complaint properly don't need to uh, use humiliating words, you know, as we have seen so much, or, you know, pour the hot water on someone else, or do some very, um, uh, co- like, threats and coercion, just because you think things doesn't go the way you want, you know, nothing, nothing in this world, you know, owes you anything, right, nothing, right, just because you have the money to buy the service and stuff like that, all right does not make it all right to do that um because money is just a resources and resources you know is useful because everyone's recognize it you know the value of money uh if everyone do not recognize it your money becomes a piece of trash all right so i'm not going to i think i'm going to find that but the point is like always put yourself in other people's shoes you know if especially in hospitality industries. This is something we can be more relatable with, right? Um, people wake up, people work hard, people are trying to get by every day, you know, with the um, with a lot of ask in the industries and, you know, they have maybe have their own ambition to achieve and, you know, the last thing they need is someone else to, you know, pour, you know, make it harder for them to get by what is already a very uh, poorly paid and very demanding industry. So that's one example I can think of relates to this. Uh, Master Shinkong's side, he did go a little bit on a detour and talk about the, um, you know, because this is because you're demanding others. So you become, you know, abusive, you become um, very, very um, mean, very uh, you know, unreasonable in your demands. And then Master Jung will say that how do you become a proper, like, successful person? You need to ask yourself instead of others first. You know, first ask is, should be on yourself, right? What you can ask from others is only based on the job description, that's it. You can ask more than that. They have to be willing to work with you in that ground because there's so much there's so much gap to fill in in between the the black and white in the job description or you're supposed to assist the team in doing ABC if they just do it by the letter they just assist the team by ABC and not understanding the fluidity of the situation you know we cannot be mad at them we need to show an example how flexible we are before we demanding others. A lot of times we do this kind of, the people would use this kind of abuse and these things because they didn't understand what they want. It's like a baby, right? Like you, you, they kind of communicate and they just lash out and stuff like that. A mature, good leader, you know, with very secured mindset, with understanding, uh, empathy, empathetic of others, they will not lash out like a baby. Even though the situation is terrible or, or very hard, right? First thing they need to work on is their emotions. They need to make sure that their emotions are not affecting their capability to lead, to carry the whole team, 
towards a direction, you know, to delegate, to lead, to actually lead, to actually carry some sort of direction in the middle of the chaos, right? In normal business settings, that you know, something like COVID happens, suddenly your whole running operation has been in fact affected. As a leader, you need to actually, as a boss, right? You need to actually, you know, think three steps ahead at a time when everyone else is trying to clock off and go home, right? That's demanding. And that demanding should be on ourselves. So these kind of attitudes should be towards ourselves, not towards servants. Of course, take care of yourself, of course, don't overdo it. But if you want to improve, you know, your life, whether it be your career or your relationship and stuff, you need to demand yourself now ask more out of yourself like I can do more than this I can be better than this and that's how it works properly the, the, the opposite would be creating enemies everywhere creating animosities not just enemy in this life but animosity that carries on and on and on and on and it's not worth it because it will become an obstacle that bites you in the, in the back so people in that kind of position, you know, what is the correct example is they have to treat themselves very strict, demand themselves high, higher than what normal people would, and then treating other people with more leniency, right? The right amount of leniency, of course, you still need to exert, you know, be, lay out the rules and stuff, but always have flexibility for them. Let them, because they they also have their own things to follow on, and if if they can see from your example, you know the way you do things, the way you arrive at time, and the way you you know interact with others, the way you manage stuff, you know the way you manage situations, peoples, even though you are already very tired, you still display that level of calm calmness, you know. And not allowing your emotions over overdoing it, overriding yourself. Uh, that's very important. That's inspiring. That makes them think, makes them learn, and that's how you actually, you know, influence them to do the way, the things you you want in the right way. Mm. All right, so. I don't want to go too far. Um, the last one is threat, conquer, you talk. You know, there are two types of fears they instill, right? The first one is someone already have issues, troubles, that, but they will not um, try to comfort them and trying to help them. Instead, we add to add oil to the fire, make it worse, make it more sticky. Uh, you know, scare them or. Um, creating even more uh, 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 fear for them, more factors of fear for them. Second one is trying to um, use this kind of threats and coercion to get something out of it, something that only benefits yourself at their expense. Uh, especially when those people who has the power and authority, they usually, um, you know, outside the side of a government or someone in the higher authority, they might, you know, extort you know, money extort um, any sort of benefit they can get using their position uh, sometimes when they're very far away you know like in a remote town and stuff like that collude with other police uh, like maybe a sheriff in the town collude with other police and you know work with the local um, hooligans uh, trying to get uh, you know stuff out of it unfairly you know get some money benefits, monetary benefits, or um, any kind of um, perks, uh, you know, just because you are, you know, first in charge in this place. So that's um, the twisted way of doing things, right? And, but like, you know, Bodhisattva Guan Yin is the opposite, right? He, she, he, oh, actually no gender. So this Bodhisattva Guan Yin has, um, uh, has been very famous for giving the um, 
uh, appearance of you know fearlessness. You know, they give fearlessness because every time you have you know issues like car crash, earthquake, there's so many s- scenarios, right? Life-threatening scenarios, and they they um just chant the name of Bodhisattva Guan Yin earnestly. Obviously, in, in face of death, you don't have time to think about anything else. If you used to chant the name of Guan Yin, you usually you would. You will be free from the, you know, the, the dangers, you know, without you knowing it. So that's one way of uh, looking at it. Um, I think that's it. I'm not stretching this too far. So we go into the next one, which is slide 15. If I'm correct. While waiting for it, guys, any um. It doesn't have to be this round, it can be the next, uh, like the previous, um, you know, the talk we have with Venerable uh, Wu Ling, right? Do you guys have any, uh, any thoughts? It's very interesting, isn't it? Forgiveness. The more you punish the word, the less effective it is. Next slide. Hopefully, this is the right one. Mm-hmm. All right. Unscrupulous behavior. Well, what does it mean? You know, um, Wu Jidan, no, without fear. In this case, we have no shame, like, you know, uh, colluding or, or um, doing something without uh, thinking that, without, without, without. Um, caring about the consequences, I guess. Not scrupulous. So why do I choose this big word? Yeah, right? <laughs> unethical. Yeah, they say unethical behaviors. That's also very broad. Having or showing no moral principles, not honest or fair. Wu Ji Dan E. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so let's look at the sentence. Instead of reflecting on one's conduct or amassing merits to earn blessings, wantonly assigns blame for misfortune of nature, other people, and fate. Alright, something's missing here. Yu and Tian Yu Ren. Instead of reflecting on one's conduct or amassing merits to earn blessings, one wantonly assigns blame for misfortunes of nature, other people, and fate. So it's just one idea. The whole point is. Everyone in the world is wrong except you. Yeah, that's the um, mindset. So we already can see the how wrong it is, how how off-putting that kind of attitude is, and how helpless uh, one would be if they continue to um, stuck in that mindset, right? If 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 there is no self-awareness, there's no way you can get out of it because forever there will always be someone else who uh, make your coffee too hot. Someone else that um, makes your day bad. There's always someone else to blame for your, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, for your bad day, for your, for your terrible day. And that is a recipe for isolation. People will just stay away from you or keep an arm's length with you. Uh, we're going nowhere in relationship in in our um, path towards you know enlightenment or success. It's just going nowhere so and also we must understand the way the world is 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 imperfect nothing is perfect in this world you cannot have the things that does not go your way is always more than the things that goes your way the things that goes your way is very rare right and if you have expectation and you have that sort of ones and you didn't get it it should be a normal thing rather than an abnormal thing. I'm not saying that we shouldn't ask, but we should put our effort in cultivating the cause because we already know there's cause and there's effect. And condition is very conditional. You know, it's not, uh, you have to be in the right condition for things to bear fruit. So the point should be accumulate more merit so that things will go your way easier rather than blaming you know the phenomenon you know blaming the blaming the rain blaming the people you know 
blaming this, blaming that. You know, their behavior may have led to your uh, misfortune or your down, your downturn. But you know, it takes to the tango. You can't, it can't make you feel you uh, feel bad if you don't get moved by it. It's very hard, but. That's how we need to work on. Like, um, we can't have everything going our way, and if we keep blaming others, we will never see the bottom of it because it will be thousands of reasons you can put aside and end up dying foolishly without knowing any better. That's a very terrible existence to live in because you will lock yourself in a cave. You know, everyone else is wrong. Everyone else is against you. You become more and more and more isolated. You can't connect to people. You can't because there's no there's no quarters. You keep no quarters. You always assign blame to others. The good stuff you keep it to yourself. So that attitude must be avoided at all costs, right? Some some cases you might not be partially blamed. You might be partially blamed. Some cases you might you know not entirely wrong. The point is. Um, if it falls onto your plate, all right, it's always an opportunity to look into yourself and say, how do I manage this situation? All right, if I am not in the wrong, how do I manage this situation? Did I still give rise to anger, a righteous anger? We can justify it like that. No, all right. Like if even if you give rise to anger on something, you know, on something that is not your fault. Like why would you blame me on this and stuff like that? It may sound like reasonable on the worldly people's mindset, but in the comic mindset, in this mindset of a person who wants to get out of the suffering, it is not. It is only worsening your condition. You you're only creating more negative mind. So the point is, we need to understand if there's anything that's not going away, anything that makes your life harder. Be it the cause arise from yourself or from external factors, always remember this is, you know, a this is a result of the past. It's like a momentum, right? It's like a gravity or something, something that's already spinning and it will keep going and going and going. If you if you give rise to that kind of blame and angers and stuff like that, you only add more to the momentum. And it will only keep spinning and spinning and spinning nonstop. You will always be in its orbit, getting pulled towards this cycle. Um, so what can we do, right? Do we want to continue be um, dictated by external factors? Because we assigning blame to others means that we assigning the cause of success to outside, the cause of happiness to outside. And hence, we rob, uh, how to say, we surrendering our agency, our control over our destiny in a sense. Um, it's not obvious, of course. So many things are not going your way, so many things is, it, it, you get trapped in, you can't get out, and you have, still have to go on living. But that is because of the past, and how do we? create enough counter momentum to get out of this you know orbit of misery it is a very important stuff it's a very practical stuff you know if i'm keep trapping in this cycle of uh, you know hatred or cycle of um, poverty cycle of um etc 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 those things that are miserable and bad how do we get out Everyone wants to get out of it. Right? Everyone tries a lot of things, but how many people made it? And even if they made it, we can see it as well. Maybe in next life. So the job is not to wait for the fruit to come or wait for some sort of lottery, you know, win and all that. Those are those are like I say, fruit. Those are the effect, those are the conditions. The cause is always there. You know, always practice cultivating good deeds for merits and that should getting more and more genuine as we go from I just want to get out of this experience I just want to get out of this 
hell hole. I just want to get out of this uh, misery to I genuinely like doing this. I genuinely like helping people. I genuinely um, love giving stuff, love giving away things so that you know, people can be happier. That's when you know you only, your life will only go upwards. You, will get, you can't go down because you always give and you always you know, take care of others. You always have compassion, room for other people. And that spin snowballs into something better, bigger and bigger. More resources come to you and you share the resources to more people. And then more people knew about you, they, more, they came to you for help. And the more you deal with people, the more wisdom you have. Context, it's always important. Like giving a bottle of 1980s, you know, charades or something to someone in position of influence and power would be looking as, look upon as bribing. Then, you know, just giving your time and play efforts or giving a small, nice gesture of gift, gift gesture, you know, just a gesture, a small gift to your friends, to your uh, Dharma brothers and sisters is different. It has to be the context, right? You need to look at what con- what kind of social condition you're giving it um, and what capacity you are giving it, like of the giver. Um, in this context, um, the giving is all about, it's, it's not just about money, it's not just about trying to, you know, um, pull you into some organization and join us. It's just simply spending some time like what you did with the picture of the Buddha, right? You're spending some time creating the nice, beautiful mosaic using the beads, you know, Buddha mosaic, uh, mosaic of Buddha image, or Bodhisattva image using the beads. That's giving, right? People who saw it, who, who came across that pictures of yours that you have created were the one who received from you. Because of you, they have planted the seeds of enlightenment in their mind. That's giving. Um, of course, giving also has a social connotation as well. Like, you know, what you give also means what it is, but it, it depends on your relationship with them, right? And the appropriateness of the gift is dependent on the relationship with them. But if we're just talking about purely from cultivated perspective, giving is just simply you you're spending time with them. You know, spending some hours with them, uh, a bit of your busy time, uh, sitting down and listen to their, uh, you know, worries and stuff like that. That's also giving, giving of fearlessness. Um, there are three comes, kinds of giving: giving of wealth, and these can be further subdivided into actual wealth, like money, physical wealth, or your time, your effort, your volunteering effort, like what you did for the pictures. That's also giving of wealth, internal wealth. And the second one is the giving of your, uh, you know, life experience of your, you know, like what you mentioned about the the, the speech um, impediment that you might encounter. That also gives fearlessness to people if you share it to other people and how you overcome it, you know, despite being treated differently. You know, you didn't stop giving, you still continue in your lane, you know, doing what you can that's fearlessness. They think it's all right to be different or it's all right to have a condition uh, they are not the same as others. But despite that, you still you still try, you still do what you do, right? You still continue, you drive on. Uh, and you do not bear grudge, you do not have any um, uh, ill will. You might not understand why they do that, but one day, perhaps one day, they will, uh, you know, came to see the way you see the world, like came to empathize, sympathize, or sit on the same wavelength with you, right? Um, for now, you just do what you do best. You know, you do what you can. And that's also giving. Yeah, fearlessness gives long life, right? And then the giving of Dharma, like what you share right now, what Auntie Ins do right now, sharing to the whole world is giving of Dharma. What I'm doing right now, what Venerable Woody is doing right now. Now, your question, you're asking the question also, is a giving of 
right, right as, as of right now, you already give. You already give it, and I'm the one who receive it. I believe Auntie Enzo would have the same sentiment and the rest as well. So that's giving. So bribery is like you're trying to get something out of them. It's always the intention and the context. You're trying to get something, right? That money that you give is not willingly, or not just money, maybe the materials or the things, the object of your giving is not out of your willingness. It's because you're trying to either get something out of it, you know, like a transactional mindset. You know, I, will, I give you this much. I hope I can get some uh, convenience, you know, from your position, from your um, authority. When I'm trying to get through something, maybe through exam, through you know some examination of your products, you know, trying to pass it easier. So that's bribery. I don't think you do any of that. <laughs> no, don't worry. When I loan money to others, right? I always remember what Master Jing told us. Don't expect it to come back. Right? I when I so I always have the bottom line drawn, no matter how close the relationship it is with them. Even it's my friend, family. I have one principle. Can I afford to cut loose that money or what that gift? It's a gift. I treat it like a gift. Right? If I can't afford it, I would say no. Right? It's it's my right, it's my it's my earning. I know that it sounds like selfish and unholy life, but if I can't, I can't. I'm being honest about it. I can help you in many ways. I can help you to find the right person. I can spend my time and energy to help you to get some job or repayment or you know, trying to get by or maybe even provide an accommodation for a few weeks, few days. But I'm not giving you this amount because I can't afford it. If I can afford it, I'll cut that as a loss or as a goodwill in terms of financial terms. That thing is gone. If I cannot, I cannot. It's um, it's fair because you, you don't owe anyone any kind of money or anything. That's that's how to deal with the world, right? And this is something we pick up as we learn, right? That there is a situation where some you know fellow practitioners might find me to sign some sort of guarantee, you know, on on getting someone else migrate to Australia. I refused because it's not something I can commit. If it's committal and I'm not going there for a long run. First, I'm not the family member. Second, even if I'm the family member, I'm not the right family member for that. Then I won't, right? Your hardship, I can help you a little bit. I can, you know, time to time, find the right person. Or, you know, if I can cut loose this amount of cash, I can cut loose. If I cannot, uh, there are other ways to do it. You know, it might not help a lot, but it might be there. You know, when, when the time is right, I might find the right person to help you. Either way it is, uh, we need to learn to draw the line. You know, that's that's the first step. And of course, the way I say it's not perfect. It's not good. It's not sages, sage, sage, sage life. But none of us is that level where we can let go of everything and nothing to lose, right? Like Master Ching Kong, right, has... Um, situation where his you know the the temples that donated in his name to his name like this basically a part a land transfer to him so that he can co continue to promote Buddhism and of course being Master Jingo who is only one goal in his mind to bring everyone to Pyongyang so he does not dwell on wealth and all that worldly stuff and he has proven that 60 years so when someone else wants the patch of land and tell him to get out of that place, all his students were furious. Right? He was furious. Like even the student that follows him, it's like just can't take. It. It's not. It's disrespectful. Right? And we know Master Ching Kong is very loved and respected. Right? But he also encountered lots of this, where he trying to do good by them. But this is the re result he received. You know, that kind of treatment that he received is, uh, might be what you feel right now. You might feel even more closer to what he, that I have. You know, you'd be mistreated in a sense. And you know, even being kicked out of the place that he, 
you know, help to promote the Buddhism. So he got kicked out of that property and Master Jing Kung's like, everyone's trying to say, yeah, just bring it to court. And then Master Jing said, oh, my dead body, literally. In a very, in a very roundabout way, he said, if you guys want to go to court, first carry my coffin in front of the court, then you guys can sue the court. And then everyone's like, of course, they let go of that property. Because Venerable Master has faith, ultimate faith in karma. He understands that he did not do wrong by the amount, the, 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 by others. And he will be reassigned. This is all arranged by Bodhisattva in a sense. He, because of that situation, he got kicked out of a certain place. That's why he has this ability to go other countries over, across the, over the world. Because if you guys don't want it, we want him. You know, we want Master to come over here and teach us Dharma. And that's what happened. And the more he walked, the bigger the stage is. He's going to, you know, UNESCO. He's like, no monk should, you know, end it up in UNESCO because this is a worldly, you know, it's supposed to belong to, you know, politician and big people. But why are we here? You know, just to promote peace. The point is, he has encountered this level of unfairness, unjust, but that does not, he, he, he realigns himself properly, you know, in accordance to his teaching, to the teaching of um, Buddha, the teaching of enlightenment, which means person who knows. And, and what he knows is it will come back in the right way. And though he don't think, he don't wait for it to come back the right way. He just do his job as a monk, giving lecture, giving teaching. He doesn't care where he end up with as long as he can give the Dharma talk. All right. It's hard for him. It's hard for the student who follows him, but he gone through that phase. We just didn't see it because he's now in his very stable years. You know, everyone is, you know, his own Dharma place, right? Back then he lived under different roof, you know, sponsored by different people. So I hope that helps a bit with um, what you encounter at the moment. Um, because beyond just saying, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, oh man, that's bad, or you know, that, that guy is, you know, it's not helping you as well. It's not helping myself as well. What actually helps you is you are doing no wrong by others. That's one number one. Don't ask, like, not hoping for any rewards, but you just hoping I did not do wrong by others. That's number one. And, and I believe you don't, right? You do your, you do your best and actually go out of your way. So what you should do right now, well, I, I shouldn't say that. What you could do right now is you can continue with what you are. Of course, you still have merits and fortunes. Believe in that. You know, have faith in yourself, in your, in your deeds. Purify that thoughts further. Don't let it steer you away from this path. Of course, now that you have this experience, in Chinese there's a saying, you know, if you haven't gone through a certain ordeal, you wouldn't have an insight on what to do or what not to do in that kind of ordeal or encounters. That's exactly what happened to you and I'm pretty sure that's how we learn as well. So now you know that you know, don't give something that is long-term commitment to others. Because it also caused problems to them as well and yourself. It's not helping them as well. But your intention is right. Right? It's just the way you execute it, you can you will get better and better. That's how you improve. That's how we improve as well. So I mean yeah. Let's, let's just say that we were very I'll say um let's say your act of giving is it's spot on, it's there. It's hard to give, but do not allow yourself to sway by the thought of, you know, why didn't I get any respect? You know, why didn't I have that treatment? You know, ought to be happening when you actually trying to help. Don't ask for that. That respect, that treatment, and stuff like that, it will come to you naturally as you improve your character, which you are. You as you be more willing to give and less. Um, how do I say you, you, you'll be able to more you know give freer you're freeing yourself up you know from, from the bonds 
but of course give it wisely and w wisdom does not come without the lessons in life and this is the lessons we all learn you know thanks to you you also give us the gift um, of you know discernment able to discern you know what is wise what is not wise you know? um, so next time right always have I, I, I encourage you to accept this exercise every time you try to give right is, is it better to give a material help? And if it's a material help, cash, or even better, convert it into something they can use straight away. Tools, bed, blankets, stuff like that, that they can use um, in, a, in a more meaningful way, right? If, if we just give cash, is this person really need that? If they say they are, right? Properly, it's it's very hard to know, right? So you need, you either need to make a choice to cut a, cut it a lost, you know that thing is gone. When like beyond bank, right? Nothing else, it, especially more families and stuff. Do not think the gift you give out will come back to you. Always write it off. That thing is gone, right? Even friends as well. If you're not willing to part from that level, then you you do not give them. So like credit, do not um, never never allow people to have your credit, because that's only hurting both sides, hurting you financially, and yeah, you need to work harder to get it back uh, to normal credit rating. And then yeah, if you want to give give a raw cash if you can, if you want, if you're willing to. 10, uh, 1K, 2K, doesn't matter. $100, $200. Something you can give. Something you can cut loose. And then just cut it off. That's my mindset. Mm. And I never think about it again. If I have a sense of regret, a tinge of regret, I, I slap it away because there's no point. Right? This money is gone. It's gone. That's, that's the way, there's a way of giving, right? And um, eventually, of course, you, hopefully your coffer gets more and more you can cut off more losses. And that giving it is actually very good. Um, but for now, give according to your ability. And also, um, there are many ways to give. Like right now you're giving, or you're spending time with them. Um, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't give you any more better an answer, uh, but I hope master stories and and, and you know, our exchange can help you a bit. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please keep asking uh, if you have any issues. Um, let it go. That's right. You don't want you don't want to continue this kind of relationship again. It's just painful. Like even as even people owe you, right? It, it, it's it's weird. Yeah, yeah. You can have it. Like. Like, eventually when you practice Bodhisattva path, you can even give away your arms, your cornea, let alone, you know, your money. So, those things are, those things are, how to say, replenishable. If you understand that, of course, well, I haven't fully grasped it and we're still very, you know, on the money clinch a little bit. But, like, practice consistent giving as well. You know, it doesn't have to be one off. Like always every month pour a little bit into that consistently always have that funds that's how you can practice giving as well you, with money you know monthly donation you understand this is a genuine organization like those temple that you attend they're actually genuine they didn't ask they never ask for money for your money but they always have a channel for you to donate to them that's how you know it's legit like Hua Zhang Wei Si you know the one in Taiwan uh, the Hua Yi Hua Zhan Society or the China Temples or the one in US, Houston, I think, Dallas, Dallas, I think it's, that one's genuine as well. So you already know those genuine organization. And if you have the means, just, you know, set aside $20, $30, $50, $100, up to you. Just every month donate like a subscription kind of thing. That's how we do it. You know, instead of one off. You know, consistently give it like, and, and if like you know, it flows long and long, and you get used to it. 
and that that giving is, is more comfortable yeah instead of one big chunk but um it, different people different condition it's just one of the ways so or one of those organizations you really support cancel council for us we have you know world vision you know those are really good stuff they they literally give you a report what they did they've been scrutinized by the government you you are the nations UNESCO, you know, as, like association of friends of Master Ching Kong, you can donate to them as well. You know that they are legit. So there are many ways to give, and of course, don't, don't have to disclose it. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the whole point of giving, right, is always practicing letting go, right? Like fang kampo fang chia, and letting go is always the hardest homework we have. And we start from the easiest one, and the easiest one is the money. Because the first thing you 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 wouldn't you have to let go is your money. When things push, when when when, when things like disasters or sickness, you have to use your money to heal yourself, to buy medicines. So that's why they say donation start from there. And then you also have to understand, right? The giving also needs to pour in your heart to give. Like you spend your time, like again, Melinda, you did this beats thing for Bodhisattva. And the end, you spend so much time to edit, to collect you know, the teachings, make it accessible to more people in the world. These are giving. These are more precious than money. Because your money, everyone can, it's a currency, but you actually put in heart and time to craft something that people can actually use straight away not just blindly you know, have for money of course there's there's a real resource you can use you know the temple and stuff you can buy better sound system but that's beside the point you know, volunteering yourself like you what you guys do right now is volunteering you don't have to be in the temple but you already volunteer to the dharma and, and at your own leisure, at your own pace, no one's forcing you, no one's trying to make you do things. That's how you expand it. And then it becomes natural to you. You, you become wanting to do more. Like sometimes I'm reluctant. See, my giving is w- w- was weaker than you guys. I, I, I sometimes feel more reluctant to give in terms of my time to the temple, to Chan and all that. But I always remind myself, uh, like, do I feel actually really happy afterwards? I do. And I really do feel connected to the path after I do the chanting. So no matter how reluctant I am now, I will always force myself at least you know, every two weeks once and do it and you know, do it. Including this one as well. I don't feel good when I go into talk, but after I share with you guys or hearing from you guys, all right, I feel good. I feel like, oh, I'm actually back online in a way with Amitabha, no longer stuck with my hobbies. So yeah, yeah. Keep keep going, keep doing it. It's just the way you do it will be better. You will know. You already learned the lesson. You already paid the tuition, like the ten k is your tuition, auntie. And if that tuition can exchange your path to pure land, in a way of you know you understand how to do it once. <laughs> Hell yeah. You do it out of the heart of protecting the dharma, and that's even though the person might not be the real one, but because of your intention, that's. That's a merit. And that's why you, right now you have this condition and all that to do all this. So just keep like keep going, right? You, you, you still have a roof over here, you still have things over that. Always remember, bring it to the present because I always we're always easy to trap into that, oh, that thing happened, that thing happened. And of course it's painful, right? You, you lost so much in this kind of a wrong person, you know, it's not who that you think they are. And that kind of respect or anything because Respect is something you give yourself first before they give it to you. Never ask for them. Never, never try to. You need to have that level of discipline and stuff. As in, people who has a basic level of discipline, able to hold a job, able to hold a a certain you know occupation. It doesn't have to be like paying jobs. It can be like volunteering as well. They continue persistently doing it day to day. And they didn't do wrong by other people. They didn't steal. They didn't do anything. So that's the basic discipline, and that's the basic um, 
ability to hold your life together. And that is already first step, you know. And then you expand further with your now understanding of the teachings and stuff and the condition that giving to you, you can do more. You expand that. Your, 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 le- your level of respect increase when you treat people, other people with more respect without asking for it in return. That's very hard, but slowly you get there. You get to a level where you don't need to wait for a validation for others because, because you already know you can do it and you already know you're on the path towards it. All you need to do is just continue, you know, interacting with others. If they're willing, if they're open, if they want to know more because of your example, they will come and ask you, right? They will like, hey, how do you do this? Why do you so calm and why do you always have the you know, joyfulness in you? You know, always willing to give. That's when you actually help others. And, and, and you gain respect naturally by that without asking for it. So keep doing what you're doing, align yourself with the Dharma and ask questions, you know, join our uh, variable willings talk, that's perfect. It's, I, I, I can't say any further than that. It's so rare to have variable in our session and just, even it's just once per month, you know, we can have that summary, collective summary, and then we can share that summary of our life chapter in that moment. So make use of it. You have the resources, you have this condition, you're in the right place, you're in the right condition, you're in the right moment, present. All right, keep going. More test, yeah, more test. Non-stop. You won't stop till you go to Pure Land. Even then, bigger test waiting for you. Take your time. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's Pure Land, repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. A-mi-tho-pho 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 a mi to fo 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 good morning everyone and good night everyone Bye-bye. Bye. I mean, to pull.